Hello there, my fellow loyal squad mates, and welcome back to some more Warhammer 40k lore. Today we're gonna take a look at another couple of fairly obscure Imperial Guard regiments. These are the Semtexian Bombardiers and the Finrecht Highlanders. I do apologize if I mispronounce the second one. Also, since these are part of some relatively old lore, do take their full canonicity with a bit of salt. All that being said, I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Semtexian Bombardiers are an Imperial Guard regiment raised on the mining world of Semtexia. Now, I'm not certain who invented Semtex, but someone must have been a really big fan to name an entire planet after it. The world of Semtexia was always considered a relatively unimportant mining world, providing some meager ties to the Imperium. Its unique export was something called Coltrinium, which is useful in the manufacture of weapons on Armageddon, but it is only since Semtexia had started producing military units that the world has increased in strategic importance. The Bombardiers are a relatively new series of guard regiments founded in the last century of the 41st millennium as a direct response to Gazgul Mag Uruk Fraka's first invasion of Armageddon. This was the first full regiment that was ever raised from the thinly populated planet of Semtexia, and the rise of their military might was born of desperation during the Second War for Armageddon. With regiments to raise, more miners were transported to the planet, providing a great increase in population. With the bigger workforce, new ore strains were quickly found, which in turn led to more complex and powerful artillery designs, and also to the production of the now legendary Semtexian sink mines. With many fighting men from Armageddon's neighboring planets already committed to either the defense of Armageddon and the first orc assault, or in preparing their own star systems for possible attack, it was left to the Semtexians with their limited resources to provide a unit of reinforcements. Artillery pieces were hastily manufactured from all the raw materials that could be scraped together in time from the planet's surface, with many mining and civilian vehicles cannibalized to provide parts. However, the first Semtexians were woefully short of both men and equipment, as they boarded converted merchant transports for the long journey to Armageddon. These barely numbered four batteries. As the orc hordes quickly spread across the continent of Armageddon Secundus, many factories would fall to their advance, including those responsible for the manufacture of artillery, thus depriving the Imperial Guard of an important resource that was so desperately needed in battle. Once upon Armageddon, the Semtexian bombardiers were quickly deployed to the front line, where the Imperial defenders had been pushed back as far as Acheron Hive by the irresistible tide of orcs. Their determined actions in repelling the Greenskins at Acheron with mass bombardments made the Hive impossible to assault, and allowed the beleaguered defenders to hold out until the Space Marines of the Blood Angels arrived to reinforce them. This single battle ensured that all future guard regiments raised from Semtexia would continue in the Bombardier tradition. The Bombardier regiments are composed of artillery and siege assets, utilizing a variety of heavy siege vehicles and a few light armor vehicles. They are uniquely organized into batteries instead of the standard company formations of the other guard regiments. They are known to work in close concert with supporting regiments and to help in the construction of massive earthwork fortifications with their experienced engineers. These vital fortifications stretch for miles behind the main war zone, providing a vital network of protection for hundreds of static in placed artillery vehicles. They will stay there for the duration of the conflict, ready to receive fire support requests from guard officers in combat, or, alternatively, to launch a series of devastating mass bombardments upon enemy-held ground to neutralize all effective opposition, before other regiments move in to crush the remaining resistance. Their static method of warfare means that the regiments are very vulnerable against a mobile enemy, or an army capable of launching lightning-fast attacks which penetrate defensive lines before any action can be taken. 
For that reason, the Semtexian will almost always rely on other regiments for support. Relationships between the Semtexians and other guard formations are usually very cordial, born of the fact that both realize that once battle is joined, the regiments have to rely upon each other for effective support. One notable individual associated with these guys is one Colonel Evarta. Colonel Evarta was a senior ranking officer of the 3rd Semtexian Regiment. During the initial landings in the 3rd War for Armageddon, several of the regiment transports were destroyed by orcs, as they pressed in on all sides, taking eight batteries of Semtexians with them, including four mechanized infantry companies. Upon landing on the planet, Colonel Evarta, the highest ranking officer still alive in the unit, agreed to have the Semtexians broken down into individual squadrons, and dispersed throughout other guard regiments. Without the possibility of protection from their own mechanized companies, their artillery batteries were extremely vulnerable to orc attack. Once they were moved into other formations, at least they were guaranteed some level of protection. Three more mechanized companies were sent to the Armageddon system, having been delayed by a diversion to counter orc raids on Umbridge 144 before Armageddon itself was attacked. Finally provided with these required reinforcements, Colonel Evarta was able to have his remaining unit make their way through the orc blockade relatively intact. The regiment was once again fully reformed, and they were capable of providing mass artillery support, which would send many orc warbands reeling from the onslaught. The second of today's regiments, and one that I'm hopefully not mispronouncing, is the Finrecht Highlanders. These guys hail from the savage and mountainous planet of Finrecht 37, located in the Agrippina sector in Segmentum Obscurus. Finrecht 37 is a large tide locked moon, classified by the Imperium as a feral world. It is slightly habitable, and the people are hardy and notoriously tough. The clans of the planet are a semi nomadic people who control the herds of mountain grogs, introduced to the planet a long time ago which roam the valleys of the moon in search of seasonal pasture. Each clan has hereditary rights of propriety over one particular herd, although they do not control where the herd is wandering. Clan warfare is common, and many clans have hereditary rivalries going back hundreds and hundreds of years. The clans construct their dwellings along the migratory routes, and move from one to another as the herd itself moves. The lifeblood of the clan is the herd. They hunt the predators that attack the herd, and occasionally take the weaker grogs for skin and meat. The skins are traded with other clans when they come into contact and there is a surplus, along with women and weaponry. Every five cycles the clans pay tribute to the Imperium at a so-called moot. When the day arrives to pay the tribute, the best shepherds of the tribe must separate a portion of the flock and lead the Grox on the great journey to the distant valleys, where the moot is to be held. The Imperial Governor of the planet will select a portion of the herds for slaughter and distribution throughout the Agrippina sector, providing food to some overpopulated planets. Sometimes the clan is unable or unwilling to pay the tribute, and so instead it offers the lives of their youths for the regiments of the Imperial Guard. The regiment officers, support personnel and vehicle crews are drawn from the more civilized governing class of lowlanders, dwelling in the imperial starports of Finrecht. Only a few regiments were ever raised in Finrecht 37 due to the very low population, and new regiments are almost unheard of. Instead, the regiments already in existence receive a steady stream of reinforcements, giving them long histories of service. Unlike other guard regiments which are destroyed and raised from scratch again and again. Most of the Highlanders are organized as light infantry. Coming from a primitive planet, recruits receive only the rudimentary training before being sent to meet the regiment. They are trained in the use of standard infantry equipment and the lower technological support weapons which are standard in the Imperial Guard. Officers are often descendants of the Imperial Elite, and have access to more advanced equipment, usually purchased independently and highly ornamented for personal use. 
The Findrecht Highlanders' long histories and traditions of reinforcement have left many of the regiments with a great proportion of veterans. The new recruits are sprinkled into the formations as replacements wherever possible, allowing them to be trained in the military arts by a great number of experts. As light infantry, they are expected to operate over long periods of time without a need for logistical support. They utilize greater rucksacks for carrying the standard equipment, supplies and survival gear for these operations. Also, they are equipped with the standard Mars pattern LAS rifle. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Semtexian Bombardiers and the Findrecht Highlanders for today. Definitely interesting units that could have benefited from a bit more lore, in my opinion. But what is already on them is quite unique, so kudos to them regardless. What about you though? What are your thoughts about the regiment and planet named after plastic explosives? Did you know about these two units prior to this video? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.